Hi, everyone. Today, let's talk about what percentage of people are currently betting against the U.S. stock market. Then we'll take a look at some of the stocks that are moving this morning. Then we'll take a look at the CPI data. And then we'll quickly take a look at some of the charts as a result. If you like trading stocks and options and making money, definitely like and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Welcome to the Portfolio Bulletin. Let's get started. So U.S. traders and investors are betting against the markets at the highest level since 2011. Say that short bets on S&P mini futures have swelled to 321,000, which is the highest since 2011. Say over the last 25 years, this has typically been a good counter indicator, meaning that when so many people are short, the trade is crowded and usually they're wrong. Looking at the times this has happened before, you can see it's pretty much at the worst times. Lows here in 2011 lows in 2015, and then the COVID lows, all times when the markets have been super bearish, and generally as a result, markets go up. It's worth mentioning that this does not mean that markets can't go down. They certainly could go down in the next three to six months, like they think is going to happen at Wells Fargo, but it means it's probably not going to happen right now. It's also worth mentioning that these futures contracts are traded by both retail and institutions. And because there's so many, you have to assume that institutions are also participating in this shorting trade. And in terms of charts, here's a better picture of what that looks like. You can see minus 300,000, saw similar numbers at the lows here in March, the dips here in 2015 and early 2016, and then the lows going back to 2011. It's also worth noting that we have some peaks here in 2018 before the move down, as well as the end of 2021 into 2022. We were very bullish on futures contracts, as well as mid-2013. And basically, this is indicating that we should probably be long, at least in the short term. Moving over to stocks that are moving, you can see Spotify got a big upgrade with a price target of $65 per share, implying 45% potential upside. That would be a huge move for Spotify. This is a company that's been beaten down pretty dramatically, but they're getting some positive press here now. Triton International jumped 28%. Not super interesting. Usually stocks that push this far are not going to continue. Global Payments saw a 2% bump and a price target of 127. They also got upgraded by Goldman Sachs. Definitely interesting. Goldman Sachs themselves got an upgrade by UBS, indicating a potential upside of 17%. And then MGM rose 1.5% with a reaffirmation of its overweight rating from JP Morgan. Looking at the CPI results here, Core was right on the money, met expectations. CPI index for March, slightly lower than expectations. But the headline numbers came in better than expectations. And this has sent markets much higher here. So month over month, expectation 0.2, got 0.1. Year over year, expectation 5.2. And we got 5%. So both of these much better than expectations. And like I said, this has sent markets much, much higher. So let's take a look at those charts. So starting off with the S&Ps here, just for a minute, you can see the huge green bar jumped up from 410 to 413, up about a percent in the pre-market. The question is, will this hold? Certainly could turn back from here, but I wouldn't bet against it. Obviously, this is very bullish, better than expectations, and it will likely carry a rally in my opinion. Looking at the 12 hours, definitely some overhead resistance, but momentum on both charts is now very bullish. RSI is definitely getting to overbought conditions, but when you get data like this, it does tend to shift the market thesis, and it could even result in a pause at the May meeting. So that's going to be very bullish for stocks. And like I said, definitely look to stay bullish in my opinion. Looking at the Dow and the Russell, you can see the Russell got above this previous high in pre-market. Dow also making much higher highs here, looking at about three quarters of a percent higher than they were at the close. So keep an eye on this, definitely pushing much higher. And it does seem like this is going to have some follow through probably through the rest of the week. Moving over to the dollar, you can see the dollar fell off a cliff. Makes sense. Yields are likely to go lower, which means the dollar is likely to go lower, which means we should see bonds rising. So pretty much everything's playing out like we thought it would if we got a dovish reading. And this is definitely a dovish reading. And like we said in yesterday's video, a big move down in the dollar should point to bullish price action for equities. I would still like to see this take out the previous low going back to for April. 
But overall, I still think this is going to go lower. Even if we don't take out this low here in the short term, I would expect it to get below this 101.25 level over the next few days. Comment down below if you like this format. I'm still working on what these morning videos are going to look like. So definitely let me know your feedback. Otherwise, like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video. And make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.